Hi, and welcome to 15 Minutes of Fame. I'm Jeffrey Driscoll. And I'm Jim Kerr. Uh, well, let's get right to it. Uh, the Edmonton Oilers will be picking first overall the 2011 NHL Draft, Jim. Uh, a blog you could have read uh, that I actually read oh, uh, yeah, for yeah. once in my life at oh. uh, AnySportingTime.ca. Uh, a second straight, number one pick for the Edmonton Oilers, uh, which makes them only the third team since 79 to earn the top spot in back-to-back -back years. A prestigious honor. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Uh, and the other two are also Canadian teams, uh, Jim sure. Ottawa. And uh, and Quebec. That's a strange uh, trend. Isn't exactly, it? absolutely. <laughs> um, I guess uh, who do they pick? Uh, who do they pick, Jim? With their there's really there's no consensus number one right yeah. now. But uh, we'll go over a couple of different people. Let's start with uh, Ryan Nugent Hopkins. He's playing for the Red Deer Rebels the right Nuge. now. The Nuge. The Nuge. He's uh, he's a center, which uh, which we need. Uh, you know, 106 points in eight and 69 games. Uh, last season, so I mean, uh, not, not bad. Well, yeah, he's he's a smooth skating center. We've yeah. seen him a bit since he's played in Red Deer. Yeah, and they eliminated the Oil Kings in yeah, the first round. Yeah, heartily. That was a yeah. That was brutal. it. Was a yeah a beatdown of epic proportions. Exactly. But you get comparisons with a guy like Joe Sackick, which yeah. is not a Nothing bad guy that. to be compared with. Yeah. And uh, you know, he's a he's a playmaker, and that's uh, I think an important thing to look at for the for the Edmonton Oilers. Yeah, Seventy five assists led the WHL yeah, really uh, this like past season. Uh, the upside is the Oilers would be getting a solid center, playmaker center, who could play in between, you know, any combination of your Halls, your Everleys, your Gagne's, your Coglianos, whoever it is. The downside is he, you know, would maybe need to gain a bit of weight to be yeah. uh, an effective player, I think. But that's that's par for the course with, with prospects coming up. Absolutely. That's the kind of guy I like, too, as well. I just, it makes me so mad when we lose so many face-offs, especially yeah. big ones in the opposing zones. Absolutely drives me nuts, because then we're, we're chasing the puck until, you know, until we get another chance again. So. And he seems to be a, a, a kind of level-headed kid, so yeah. that, that's all, you know, that's enough. So he's not a... He doesn't act like a superstar, which yep. can be a downside. Rob <laughs> Shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, how about Adam Larson, Jim? I mean, he's playing in the Swedish Elite League right now. He's a big defenseman, uh, which we like. Uh, nine points in 37 games, but he's never going to score that many points. But, uh, you know, he's solid, solid on the back end. Yeah. And that might be something the Oilers need. What do you think? Well, the argument right now, I think, with a lot of Oilers fans is do we take the defenseman that you could easily say we need or the center that... Last year it was, we need a center, we need a center, we need... I think at the end of the day, you pick the best player, but is yeah. Larson the best player? It's tough to say. Yeah. Uh, the scouts that I've, that I've read or heard have said he's very calm with the puck, yeah. which is nice. Yeah, Probably like a that. good first pass out of the zone, which I remember uh, when we had Chris Pronger step out from behind oh, the net God. and hit a guy at the far blue line, take the tape. You, you can't, yeah, you can't you put a price can't on put that. A price you can't. On. I absolutely need it. But he's, like you mentioned, he's a big, big guy. Yeah, I like that. He was just kind of a small team. Yeah. You know, that never hurts to have a big crunching defenseman on the back end. Uh, a lot of people said Victor Hedman was the, the best Swedish defenseman prospect in years. A lot of people are also saying Larson is right up there with a Hedman. And he's quietly been a very effective player for Tampa Bay. Very much so. So if we went the way of Larson, I mean, some people say, well, it takes defenseman a couple extra years. This is, though, a guy that's been playing you know, in the Swedish Elite League for three years. Yep. So the development might be a little further on than if we're talking about a WHL defenseman or a, not a, that's not a, a, an attack on the dub. No, no. If you're playing with men, so to speak, then you know, just like PRV came in and had a pretty that's good right. season, he's not a big guy. Larson is a big guy. Yeah. The one thing they said that I've, I've read is that his skating could get a bit better, but that, you know, it's good to have something to improve. Well, exactly. <laughs> and we've seen Larson a little bit. We've seen him. Uh, we've seen him play World Championships, and we've seen him. Uh, right. I think we saw him in the Olympics too, right? And uh, it was something. Uh, something to see. Or World Juniors, sorry. We saw him in the World Juniors, and it was yeah. something to see. I mean, he's there, a so. he's a big, steady defenseman who, yeah. uh, you know, he. I, I can see him complementing what we've got already. Yeah. But is that the way we go? Exactly. Uh, we have uh, Gabriel Landeskog. Uh, he's playing for the Kitchen Rangers right now. He's a right wing, so we're looking at a forward again. Uh, 66 points in 53 games, uh, which I like to see, including 36 goals. I mean, we, yeah. we, we obviously need goals. Uh, so uh, that's uh, you know something there. Right? Well, the, the biggest thing with him that I've that I've heard above anything else is that he's a leader, and oh, he's yeah. a, he's uh, just kind of a, a born leader. Right now, he's the captain of the Rangers. Yeah. Uh, a lot of scouts say future captain in the NHL. I've seen comparisons, and this so we've we've had a comparison with Joe Sackick. We've yeah. had a you know, not that Hedman's anything crazy, but uh, a but comparison no, with Hedman. Nothing wrong with Hedman. The comparisons I've seen with Landeskog a couple of times are Jerome McGinley, which uh, 
Not a bad, no, not a bad guy to be compared to. I don't know as much about Landis Gog, but I saw a feature on him on TSN during the season, and he's a, and I've I've you know tried my best to to get up on on the Scog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's he's a solid two way grinder leader who can score goals. So that it's that's a tempting one too. That is tempting. Yeah. If he, there's nothing like a good energy guy that can also contribute. No, absolutely. I mean, somebody who can again, hopefully, you know. He can, uh, on that third line, or even a second line, like, yeah. you, you need somebody who can really pick up a game if they, if they have to. You, know, you, you picture Ryan Jones, yeah. Gabriel Landeskog, and Blank, and you could have a pretty, you know, Solid the depth line. is everything in the NHL, yes. and if, you know, not, that's not to say that he's going to be a third line player. He could easily be, be up, uh, you know, top yeah. six four in, in, in a couple of years or right away, depending on how ready he is for the season, if we pick him. If we pick him. But I think the thing with him is that he's, you know, he again, not the biggest player, yeah. but plays big. I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, and the last real player that people are talking about right now is Sean Couturier. Cur- Cur- I never do go. the French names right. <laughs> uh, he's playing for Drummondville right now. He's also a center, which I really, I really like. Uh, uh, 36 goals, 96 points in 68 games, an astounding 55, plus 55, Jim, which That's I really pretty like as well. Uh, last season, he had 41 goals and 96 points in 68 games, like we're saying. So uh, he's got three full uh, CHL seasons as well under his belt. Yeah, I, I'm always a little, not worried or unsure, but... Stats in the queue. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, that's it's got true. Got 178 goals this season. And <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> but but Couturier seems to be a very consistent uh, player in the queue, and he's put up very impressive numbers over the the last two seasons, especially. But he's a big guy. Yeah. He's the biggest of these guys. Uh, he's compared more to a Lecavier type player. Yeah. And Lecavier has done pretty well. Love Not. It. Not to say that he is Vincent LeCavier, yeah, that's but right. you know, he's, he's also coming from the same league. And I, I think with him, he's probably the most NHL ready. Yeah. Because he's you know he's got that third season, much like Taylor Hall. Yeah. Um, he's got that extra season. He's contributed in all three of those seasons, and he's I mean he's big, he's strong, and he's a center. And he's a like. center. Yeah. So again, the Oilers are a small team. Yeah. Do you go with the big, talented forward or? I mean, basically, we got four really, really good prospects that you probably can't go wrong with any of these guys. And whoever we take... Which way are you leaning after this? Well, thing? I mean, I'm still going with Eugene Hopkins. I like the center, and I like some guy, a guy with a, the playmaking skill, because Taylor Hall is the scorer. Yeah. I want to put him with a playmaker. Uh, if My second pick is Kurt Couturier, for sure. Yeah. How about you? It's tough. I, I'm I'm intrigued by Landis Gog. Yeah, yeah. i got to say that. If I, was the, if I was the Oilers scouting staff, I'd be taking a long, hard look at him, because... I think you know. It, there's a good chance that any of these guys will go on to be superstars, but there, you know, there's there's going to be one that's better than the others Perfect. overall. And I think he he might be that. Is he might have those extra qualities? But that said, I think I I just put the three names in a hat and pick one out: Tourier, and- Landeskog. The Nuge. And that's all right. I like it. We're going to move on to the Gaddies now. These are the good and bad by you. We take the best and the worst from the world of sport, and we talk about it, and sometimes even make fun of it. So uh, we're going to go uh, start off with the good. Uh, the New Jersey Devils go from a laughing stock to an almost playoff team thanks to a solid run, uh, thanks in part to a bit of a resurgence. And when I say a bit, I mean a huge resurgence yeah. from Ilya Kovalchuk. Uh, then they go and win the draft lottery. They won it, and they had like a 3%, 3.0% chance, point something percent chance, or... And uh, they move up to fourth in the draft order. So, I mean, good for them. I mean, uh, also within this good is, of course, uh, good to the Oilers. Wow. For, for yeah. landing the number one pick. They won and we, we they, they won they the won. thing and we won A. We, yeah, we <laughs> won one A. I like it. That's good. That's good. <laughs> but, yeah, they've, I mean, that's a good reward for the New Jersey. They, they ended up not making the playoffs, obviously. Yeah. Just just not making the playoffs. But they can kind of they can go into but the summer with a, with a smile on their faces. Exactly. because. But they did well without Zach Parise all that yeah, time, yeah, too. Yeah, that's right. It'll be interesting to see what they do with him this summer, because I believe he's an RFA. Uh, I think so, too. Yeah. So that's, that's that, going that, to that's gonna be fun to watch. Yeah. Maybe it depends who they end up with. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But still on the good side of things, we've got to stick with the NHL. Yeah. We're sticking to their guns. We've we've chirped the NHL quite yes. a bit in well all season. Yes. Cause that's <laughs> since, since the beginning of our series of videos. Exactly. Because they'll suspend one thing. They won't, they'll won't. they find one thing. They won't suspend The NHL Wheel of Justice. That's right. But this, so far in these playoffs, we've had two suspensions, yes. uh, which followed, of course, the Rafi Torres suspension that leaked into the playoffs. Yeah. But Jared Stoll gets a game for yeah. that hit from behind on Ian White, which 
wasn't the highest impact no, or whatever, but he, but he pretty much knocked him out. Yeah, I love the shoulder into the head and then the... And he looks... Yeah. Oh. And God. then he kind of puts his hand on him and goes, "You're, you're all right, right? <laughs> Stay there. Stand. Stand <laughs> yeah. up. Yeah. Maybe if I just lean <laughs> yeah. you like this." Uh, and then of course uh, Bobby Ryan stomps yeah. on uh, oh, that was just ugly. Just ugly. And, <laughs> you know, I don't know what you're really thinking there, but it's good for the NHL to, you know, they didn't give out huge suspensions, but yeah. you got to think each playoff game is times whatever because it's that much more important. So important. And, yeah. But it's good to see them actually follow through. Absolutely, absolutely, I agree completely. Uh, we'll give a good to the Edmonton Oilers, uh, Jordan Emily and Devin Dubnik, getting the call up for Team Canada at the World Championships. Right. Uh, hopefully, this is to start something really good for at least for Emily and maybe even for Dubnik. Start playing on an international stage, so they start to get you know kind of what it feels like, as well as uh, start playing some hopefully higher end games, you know, because they are making the playoffs. Uh, not that the World Championships are p playoff level, but they're uh -huh. they're getting up there, and uh, yeah, they can start. Uh, start seeing. Hopefully, we can start seeing some rewards for having these guys yeah. play with some other people as well. And it's, it's good for Dubnik too because yeah. he's, he had a good season. I mean, he did to, to have the record that he had coming off what the Oilers' record was. Yeah, uh, you know, very very impressive for him. So another another just experience to add to everything else that he's had in the last couple of years. Absolutely, yeah. On to the bad side now, Jeff. Uh, our favorite side. Our favorite. Yes. Detroit Pistons forward Charlie Villanueva. Charlie ah, yes. V. I like he it. used to play for the Raptors, of course. Uh -huh. Got into a bit of a tussle with a yeah, member of the Cleveland Cavaliers. Acted like a baby. You know, I don't know what happened. I think one, he hit him with an elbow. And yeah. then so later in the game, he pops him in the nuts. Yeah. And then uh, they're pulling each other away. And so he goes, yeah, yeah, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. And then kind of tiptoes around <laughs> and tries to get at him again. The guy, guy's hanging off him because, of course, he's 6'11". Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then <laughs> tries to get at him in the dressing room, oh, too. Unbelievable. Had to be. And I, I, apparently, according to the reports I read, as the police are bringing him back to his room, he says he's going to, you know, I'll kill the guy. Oh, of course. Yeah, exactly. It gets five games. Yeah, exactly. What? Come on, how, man. how did you think that was going to no. work out for you? That's ridiculous. Like, that's, uh, I'm glad your pride is intact, though. I mean, good, yeah. good, good for you, you know. Yeah, he apologized. He to the moment. Oh, uh, yeah, but... of course. That was quite the moment. <laughs> uh, we're going to move on to Texas Rangers outfielder Josh Hamilton. He broke his arm this week oh. trying to slide home head first on a play that he would later call stupid. I would yeah. suspect it's stupid if you broke your arm. Basically throwing his uh, third base coach under the bus. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. So what happened was that the, the third base coach told him to go. Go, go. Go, go. Yeah, and then and he's yeah called the third base coach that said the play was stupid afterwards. Well, I mean he broke his arm, yeah. but yeah. still dive so in head first. Exactly. <laughs> Since April of two thousand nine, Hamlet has had strained and fractured ribs, a torn torn abdominal muscle, a hamstring issue, a knee injury, and a pinched nerve. He's going to miss six to eight uh, weeks with this latest injury. The guy's got no luck, but it's not his third base coach's fault, I don't think. <laughs> no, no, total band aid. Yeah. Poor guy. That's, exactly. That's, and he's he's also had uh, he's been quite a story in his personal life too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But another six to eight weeks to play MLB the show. Yeah, exactly. On, uh, exactly. On his console of choice. Uh, our final bad. Yes. Remember the Colombian soccer player that kicked the owl? I do remember him. Yeah. Yes. This past week he was sent off uh, for kicking a guy in the chest. Owl. Yeah. Guy, owl. Yeah. Guy. Who? You asked? Who? <laughs> <laughs> the guy was laying on the ground with the ball kind of in his. It's like the old thing where you're on the ground and you got the puck and yeah. someone goes, oh, I was going for the puck. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So he got sent off and it was just a, a blatant boot to the chest. Yeah, yeah. Why? 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 I, I don't, don't understand. Know. Again, just he's, like the other guy, people. your pride is intact because that's, that's <laughs> some good work. But hey, you get sent off and your team suffers. That's a yeah. nice one right there. Uh, honorable mention this week for Kobe Bryant who uh, gets fined $100,000 for shouting a gay slur at a ref. Says he didn't mean it like that. I don't know how you could not mean yeah. it like that, but you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah one of those things. Yeah. We're going to move on to quick hits now. Uh... Uh, I you know we've seen a fair couple of games here in the NHL playoffs so far. You seen anybody so far that could take it all the way? I think Vancouver and might Vancouver go deep as much as I deep. don't want to admit it, yeah. but I'm still I like what I've seen from the Red Wings. The Montreal Canadiens are going to win yeah. the first round. Oh God. Yeah, uh, which is too bad. I thought Boston could do it, but probably not. At the same time, Kobe Bryant got fined. Uh, his coach, Phil Jackson, was fined seventy-five grand for his comments about the NBA lockout. What about those fines from the NBA there, Jim? Yeah. The, the NBA and the NFL are the only serious leagues when it comes to fining people. I like it. I like it a lot. And also the, the two that are going to be locked out right away. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, uh, that's our 15 Minutes of Fame wrap for this week. Join us again next week when we get a whole new 15 Minutes of Fame. In the meantime, I'm Jeffrey Driscoll. And I'm Jim Kerr. Have a good week, folks.